You may have heard systematic reviews referred to as pillars of evidence-based healthcare. Now, just to briefly um, explain to you how they fit this role as pillars of evidence-based healthcare, I'd like to first introduce you to the uh, our model of evidence-based healthcare and the Joanna Briggs Institute model of evidence-based healthcare. So if I can just draw your attention here to the right of the slide, you can see it's a circular model and at the middle is evidence-based practice. So these are the decisions that a practitioner might be making in healthcare practice where they're using their judgment uh, and expertise, their past experience to inform their, those decisions, they're using client preference. And the premise of evidence-based healthcare is that in that process, in that decision-making process, they should also be using research evidence. So where does that come from? Well, here in this model, this purple slice of the pie really represents that field of research evidence that's out there. The, the millions of academic articles, the research studies such as the randomised control trials, um, the cohort studies, the case control studies. Um, there are all different sorts of evidence here. Evidence isn't just conducted scientifically to derive numbers. In this, there are diverse forms of evidence available in the scientific literature. Um, there's research that addresses the meaningfulness of interventions and treatments, not just their effectiveness, and that would look like qualitative research. An opinion piece, for example, can also be considered as evidence, and they are often put in writing. Um, a practitioner might refer to their colleague across the patient bed um, to, to draw upon their expertise, but there's no reason why that same practitioner can't draw on a published piece from another doctor, for example, on the other side of the world to also inform their decision making. Now, how do practitioners do this? And this is really where systematic reviews are so important in the evidence-based healthcare process and underpin so much of what is going on. The time-poor clinician who's looking after patients day in, day out, is expected to be able to access this evidence, find appropriate evidence in relation to any particular type of clinical question they may have, um, assess it to make sure it's good and then use that to inform their decision making and that's a really big ask of any clinician and that's a lot of what stimulated this um, need for evidence synthesis and specifically this, this um, research project or process that's called the systematic review. So the systematic reviewer will ask a clinical question and basically essentially is doing secondary research on this existing body of research and I'll take you through those systematic steps that really define a systematic review in a moment. But it doesn't just end there. These are pillars of evidence-based healthcare because in this evidence-based healthcare cycle, in this model here, they really underpin so much of what comes next. And another important part of that is not just enough to create this wonderful research document that may be 60 or 100 or 200 pages worth, because not even that is terribly useful to the busy clinician at the point of care. What we need a means of being able to get it to the clinicians. And for that, these systematic reviews might inform education programs about the use of guidelines. And they might uh, form other, there might be other means of information. Um, uh, evidence summaries or the like that may be embedded in systems such as the JBI Connect Plus database, which is a point of care system where a lot of the, the, the evidence that's embedded in there is derived from these projects here, these systematic review evidence syntheses. And beyond the knowledge transfer or the evidence transfer, there's the all important and probably the hardest part in the evidence-based healthcare cycle that is the evidence utilisation. To know that using the evidence actually has some sort of impact in practice. And to do this, where we embed evidence in practice, we then look to see that it has some change in the system or the process or even patient outcomes.